that Delhi University is India's most coveted university with some of the country's top colleges is well known. Cutoffs yet again, and no surprises here, 99% and 100% uh, is well, like I said, absolutely no surprises. So why are students still so reluctant to look outside? And of course, the other big question, why aren't we creating more institutions of excellence? Well, that's what we're looking at today with a very special panel that joins us, so Professor Rupa Monjari Ghosh, uh, who is the Director of the School of Natural Sciences, Shivnada University with us. Professor Mamkotum, uh, who is uh, Professor and uh, Director of the Business School and Dean Student Services, Ambedkar University of Delhi here with us, Jatin Pandari, Education Consultant, also joining us. We're also joined uh, from uh, Mumbai by Dinesh Panjwani, Principal at RD National College of Mumbai University, and uh, from Bangalore, joined by uh, Mr. Venu Narayan, Director School of Liberal Studies, Azim Premji University. Thanks all so much uh, for taking our time to speak to us this morning. Professor Ghosh, ma'am, if I may ask you, we've had students calling us in a, in a state of real despair saying, I had, you know, I've got a 95%, it has to be not campus and nothing, but what I want, I'm not going to get in, etc. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of sort of like, you know, hand wringing, chest beating, we don't know what to do, our parents are so let down, etc., etc. There's little scope of them getting what they want in DU, but they're not willing to look outside. This is a very stressful mm. process. It's mm. stressful all over the world, mm. but is here mm. I think mm. part of the stress is because we do not go for any informed choice. Mm. Mm. Uh, it is true that uh, this concept of ranking that mm. you mentioned, mm. top ranked mm. institution, top ranked right. college, a right. lot of it is just hearsay in mm. India. It's mm. not based on any data. It's a public perception of how a college fares. Right. And perception often sort of trumps reality. You know, that's just... That's uh, true. So if you have found your passion, right. you should not chase an institution rather mm. than chase mm. your passion. Mm. So it uh, doesn't matter where you are, right. uh, you can press yourself hard enough right. to come up to this. So that's, is that's an important point that you sort of make, uh, especially on, on the ranking. But there's so much perception and there's so much, you know, about uh, the, the rankings. And it, we keep sort of seeing some people dominate the ranking, some institutions right. to dominate the rankings right. year on year in several rankings also. So yeah. I see the point you're making. Uh, Mr. Panjwani, if I could bring you in at this stage, we've got so many people saying, look, when you look outside Delhi, look at Mumbai University, look at the kind of colleges that are on offer there, look at the, the, the class of students, look at what they are creating. But is it, is it really frustrating to see that we sort of don't seem to get over our obsession with Delhi University? I think that is Delhi is equally uh, popular among the students across country and the world as Mumbai University. And uh, I think that the Delhi University is attracting more uh, students from uh, the neighboring and uh, internationally right. they are very sound. Right. And uh, they are Mumbai, I think Mumbai University is equally popular uh, among the students. But only thing is this is that in, I think that the number of colleges in Delhi mm. are less than the number of colleges mm. in Mumbai. Mm. So in Mumbai, we do not face that kind of difficulty right. uh, for a student getting admission into the colleges. That ranking, etc., is here also. Right. Uh, here I want to put up a one point that the student should realize that the college which they call it as top Mm. is not because of the efforts of the st students enrolled currently in the college. Right, that's true. But it true. is the efforts and the achievement of in their the past, right, years right, right, right. and the alumni. Right. Professor Makhputram, you know, one keeps hearing that there are so many other institutions. You're from the Ambedkar University. Over and over again, I'm told that why don't students look there? What's happening? Do you believe that there's something wrong in the messaging that we are putting out? I think there's a couple of uh, mm. issues put together. One we are a country of scarcity hmm. and there is a true genuine scarcity of good education institutions hmm. if you look at delhi city itself hmm. the demand is huge hmm. Hmm. but the supply of seats are limited hmm. now the cutoff that we're talking about i would consider it's a fiction hmm. it's a relative hmm. processing of elimination hmm. since we have fewer number of seats available hmm. There is, there is some mechanism whereby you, we need to eliminate mm. students. Mm. Mr. Narayan, come in here. This is, of course, the example of the north that we are seeing, you know, which is a really a nightmare. Down south, you, you're, you're representing the Azim Premji University today. How do you see the whole debate on where are our institutions of excellence 60 years on, over 60 years on? Why haven't we got 
more numbers to cater to this increasing demand. We keep talking about an India that's getting younger and younger. It's only fair that every Indian has access to the best quality education, where we seem to be failing rather miserably, sir. See, we have managed to, <coughs> uh, in, uh, we have managed to increase the number of uh, students who graduate from high school. Mm. Uh, however, the number of, as uh, Professor Mankutam uh, mentioned, the number of uh, institutions of uh, higher education uh, hasn't gone up proportionately. Right. Um, so some of the pressures in Delhi are also uh, reflected in other parts of the country. Mm. Um, the, we need to think about how to improve the quality and the uh, uh, availability of uh, uh, places in higher education right. for our students. Right. Uh, this pressure is only going to increase mm -hmm. because um, enrollment in, uh, in school education have uh, are close to 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those students over the next uh, 5 to 10 years are going to arrive at the doors of higher education. Jatin, uh, if, if I could ask you, uh, you know, I is the problem that when students go in for counselling or when they, you know, when they're still trying to figure out what to do, there's just narrow focus on what's on offer at the very top and little realisation that I need to fit not just my academic scores but also my interest, my passion, as Professor Ghosh mentioned, and that might lie elsewhere. I tell you what, hmm. I think it's very important to follow the passion, hmm. but most of the people hmm. in the education system don't even know what it is. One, right. they are never given the opportunity to follow it. Mm. There's a very, very artificial game that somebody has created mm. that who gets the best numbers wins the game. Right. You know what I mean? Like we are just, I don't think we are even human beings. We are numbers, we are percentages, we are 95, 98%. Has anybody ever seen an educational institution as a means to an end? That I want to do this for the next three to four years mm. so that I get here in life. Right. As opposed to just get following it. the game. Yeah, we created all this. It case. doesn't matter what I study. So, you know, we constantly, uh, I, I just get you in, Professor Ghosh, but you know, we constantly come up with this course or college, course or college. And while everyone says, look, focus on your course if you really want to, but most students come and say, no, it's got to be college. It's the brand that matters, yeah, right. Professor Ghosh. Yeah, there's a, uh, there is a merit to that mm. because mm. Uh, most of our so called top ranked mm. institutions mm. do not do any value addition. Mm. Sorry for being so blunt. Mm. Uh, just because your peers are so great, mm. you select good students. Mm. Uh, they uh, themselves. So it's important to be in a good, to you know, bright classmates. Mm. Mm. But I think other right. than that, right. now is the time. The world has opened up for Indians, mm. and we, I would like to make a one very important point. There are relatively new institutions mm. in India that mm. are coming up in a very very mm. big way. Mm. I represent one, mm. Shivnagar University. Mm. It's only four year old. This mm. August we are going to be four. Mm. I've been there for three plus years. Now, so rankings are yet to be established. Sure. But the important point I want to make is that should you run after a well known college mm. or try out a modern university, there is a difference mm. between an affiliated college mm. and studying in a university mm. where teaching and research mm. are supposed to be synergetic. Right. So I think people do not learn when they're just lectured at, mm. but you learn by doing. Right. And that kind of participatory way of learning right. is the motto of a university. That's the definition of university. Right. And that's so of course, that's of course, uh, in an ideal world, we would see students armed with that knowledge, but we're not, are, are we anywhere close, Japan? Uh, I, I mean, like you're saying, we're, we're marks. We're not, not, not much beyond. I, I tell you what. My preparation of two months and performance in a chemistry exam, mm. how is that representative of my ability to do really something meaningful in the next 10 to 20 years? Mm. I had this pressure of society, I had this pressure of, so I'm just speaking for, sure, like, sure, yeah. Sure. So how can somebody gauge my performance of three months mm. and a percentage mm. and, and, and directly correlated with what am I capable of doing? Mm. Why do we not have something very, very qualitative? Where I, I, we can assess the interest of somebody, we can interest, mm. uh, we can assess the the ability or potential of somebody to create something new, to be creative, to create a new model, mm. or probably go to Mumbai, explore mm. arts, explore acting, anything, right. right? I don't think that is even, like if somebody does that, I think he will be branded as a rebel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, yes, uh, quickly yeah. before I get uh, there. I think it's also a question of security of employment, of future possibilities. Right. Right. 
So why do students and parents rush to, you know, X mm. uh, institutions? Mm. Simply because the students from that institution, alumni from there, are doing well in life, right? right? So it is the future potential of Correct. getting a secure job. Correct. And the market is also very biased. Mm. The recruiters are not willing easily to try out new, new institutions, right, right. new graduates from new institutions. Mm. So it's it's not as simple as it appears. Mm. To me, it's a very complex situation. Right. The aspirations mm. of the emerging so-called new middle class, mm. along with the recruiters who look for branded institutions, graduates, right. and the students caught in between. Right. So it, it, it's a very complex situation. It is a time. complex situation. Mr. Narayan, if I can bring you in, sir, again at this stage, uh, you know, we keep coming back to the point uh, like uh, Professor Mamkutum is making that everyone's going after it's not just the students but the students are seeing that in the market there's perhaps greater demand greater respectability etc greater remuneration also very often if you're out you know if, if you've got a certain brand name on your CV is there again I come back to the point is there something wrong in the messaging that we are giving out do we sort of need to sort of start afresh saying that you need to give at the end of the day the students own potential is perhaps the most important thing See, as a society, we have to uh, change the way uh, families and students understand the value of education itself, both school education and higher education. Uh, there is a very narrow understanding of what education is for, and that message, and it is not a message uh, any particular um, institution uh, needs to give, perhaps all institutions, sure. right. uh, the right. state perhaps, mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. that education is not merely about getting a good job. Mm -hmm. It has a much uh, broader remit, both as a social, uh, uh, um, something that prepares uh, young people for citizenship mm -hmm. um, and also for life. Mm -hmm. And unless this understanding seeps into wider society, we will have very narrow um, targeting of or very narrow understanding of um, what education is for. Mm -hmm. So students just look at reputation, the so-called brand value, mm -hmm. uh, so-called uh, what salary did X get at Absolutely. the end of uh, an Absolutely. education. These are extremely narrow measures. Right. They are extremely narrow measures, but and I know that what you uh, you know uh, the media sort of usually tends to highlight X passed out of so and so institution and therefore you know is earning an eight a eight figure salary or you know all those kind of headlines are are uh, sort of I guess have all contributed to the situation that we are at present. But uh, Mr. Panjwani, if I could ask you, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about why not look beyond? Why not look beyond? you know, this institution is going to get me this job, is going to get me this figure, is going to give me this respectability, but. Uh, sort of, if you do a reality check, does that really happen on the ground? And can the student today really be expected to look for other reasons like learning or, or the kind of quality of learning that I have? I mean, how, how do we sort of start making all these things matter as well? See, today that the employer is not looking for, according to me, that which institution that person has come from. Mm -hmm. They look at the skill sets which the student possess. The problem is this, that the students realize about that which career they want to pursue, that is only after joining the college, mm. where they have already chosen a course. Mm. The student first choose the, should choose first the career, then they should identify that the skill sets, and then they should look for the course. Mm. What more do we need to do? What's wrong with our messaging? No overnight changes, don't expect a magic wand, but hopefully we will be able to spread the message that there are institutions out there can perhaps uh, give you the same learning platform if, if not better that the ones that you coveted ones that you perhaps can't get into just yet offer we'll slip into a quick break back with more.